I've been reflecting a lot about my content recently, and I think this video will give me an opportunity to talk about that. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel if you're new around here. My name is Hannah Hawthorne and I'm Simply Witched. This is a video that I was tagged in by Ella Harrison and it is a witchy content creator tag that is going around YouTube. I am one of the last people to do this tag so if you watch any sort of witchy YouTube you have probably seen this video. There's a list of questions and I am going to answer them for you. So get something to drink, get something to eat, get cozy, get comfortable and let's get to know each other. Question number one, how long have you been on YouTube as a content creator? I posted my first YouTube video in September of 2020, but about six months before that, I started sharing my practice on TikTok. As you probably might remember, 2020 was largely quarantine and I was at home and I just needed human interaction. That is really what prompted me to share my practice online and I first did TikTok and Instagram and eventually made my way to YouTube. What is your channel name and what is the significance behind it? My channel name is Simply Witched and it's kind of a funny story in hindsight. I chose Simply Winched because I wanted to lift the veil of misconception surrounding witchcraft and paganism and make it feel accessible and approachable to all. But before I decided on the name, I did not realize that there were a lot of brands that use Simply Blank. Like if you go into a grocery store, you will find like Simply Ketchup or Simply Brand. Bran? I was thinking like oats? Anyway. And usually it is to signify that that product is just that ingredient. Like there's no filler and it's like a little bit more of a healthier option. But I had no idea that this is something that so many companies and brands do. And I swear, next time you're in the grocery store, go down the aisle and you will find simply something for every single product. And I don't know if it's the same company or it just started somehow. I'd like to think that I started it personally. And so every time that I see one of them, I joke that they're coming for my brand. What inspired you to start your channel? This kind of ties into the last question. It was quarantine and I just wanted human interaction. Prior to me having my channel, I didn't have any social media for many years. I'm kind of adverse to being on the internet, which is confusing as a content creator. Mainly because before I was a content creator, I didn't have the best relationship with the internet. I just felt like it wasn't benefiting me. Like I'd be online and I was just kind of rotting my brain as I was scrolling and I didn't feel like I was engaging in it in a way that was good for myself. And I still very much feel this way. And I have boundaries with social media in particular so I can exist in the real world and not just like get caught up in my screen. But becoming a content creator has allowed me to engage with the internet in a way that I did differently in the past, and I feel really good about my time online. Mainly I wanted to be online because I wanted a community, and I wanted to share my practice with others, and felt like I was part of something bigger than myself. And I really feel like we have done that. I love being your magical internet friend. And that is kind of how I think about my presence on the internet. What type of content do you create on your channel? I make primarily educational content about witchcraft, astrology, and... Rude? And paganism before I was rudely interrupted. And yes, I know that I say paganism very weird. It is because I am from Minnesota and every time I say it, someone comments on it, so I'm getting ahead of you. Anyway, like I said, I make primarily educational content, 
But in the recent past, I have felt that changing, even changing the kind of content that I make, because to give you a little backstory, when I started on TikTok, I just recorded things. I would make a video and I would do a voiceover and I was very much just simply witched. I wasn't Hannah, I was a disembodied voice that would just teach you about witchy stuff. And as I've been online, I have wanted to share more of who I am. But I have had a really difficult time doing that and showing different aspects of myself because I feel like if I don't just post educational content about witchcraft, people won't care. And the algorithm certainly punishes you for it. Especially YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. They want you to have your niche and only post about that so they know who your audience is and who to push your videos out to. But that has been really restrictive to me and I feel like I've put myself in a box and now I am navigating that and I would like to talk about it. So I feel like this tag is a really great way that I can illustrate how I'm feeling and just kind of chit chat with you about it. I have started branching out in my content. Here on YouTube, I have vlogged a lot this year. I am making Zodiac season vlogs, which are witchy in nature, but they have started to include things that aren't specifically witchy or even educational. And that has felt really good. And I feel like I've let myself relax a little bit and create content that I enjoy making and hopefully you enjoy watching. I am definitely in a really experimental phase of my content creation and I do know that it's gonna get even more experimental once I move. If you don't know, I live in Miami, but at the end of the year we are moving and then sometime in the beginning of next year we are moving to the Pacific Northwest and I am so excited. And I think that is going to give me a really big opportunity to grow in my content. I have so many plans and a lot of the questions that we're about to get into talk about that. So I will elaborate on that more. But right now, just know that I am experimenting with what I want to make and I always love to hear what you would like to see. So if you have any requests, please leave them down below. I would also love to know about the non-witchy YouTubers that you watch. So please leave them below. It would be great to check them out and see what kind of content you enjoy outside of the strictly magical stuff. Knowing what you like to see will be inspiring to me as I figure out what kind of stuff I like to make. Next question, are there any types of content that you would like to try? And again, ties back to the last one, yes. When we move, I want to get more into vlogging and take you with me outside into nature and experiment with herbalism and getting to know the new land that I will be moving to. Here in Miami, I live in a city and there's not too many things that I feel comfortable taking you out to do. There's just so many people and walking around in the middle of a huge city with a camera just isn't my thing. I have found some pockets of nature and I have done some filming outside, but that is the thing that I am most excited to do once we are in a smaller city. I would really love to get a drone and shoot some landscape footage to include in my vlogs. And like I said, I want to create other videos that aren't inherently witchy and encapsulate more of who I am as a person rather than this one aspect of me. I watch a lot of YouTubers, a lot of which who aren't witchy specific YouTubers, and I love lifestyle content and people just sharing all of their lives, and that is the direction that I would like to go. What are your hobbies outside of your YouTube channel? Outside of YouTube, I love video games. I play a lot of video games, it's probably my number one hobby. I am a Twitch streamer, which some of you might not know. I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. EST. That is for now, though when I move, I will probably have to examine my stream schedule. Video games are another area of content creation that I would love to bring here, and I have done one video, which is my favorite witchy video games, because I make everything witchy because I am in a cage. <laughs> but I've always loved getting lost in a story, be it the pages of a book I love to read, or the screen of a game. 
I've gotten really into reading fiction this year. I read a lot of nonfiction for witchcraft purposes, research, just expanding my knowledge. I love watching reading vlogs, especially for fiction books, and I've thought about doing that myself, but I do kind of feel uncomfortable doing that as an author. It just feels like... It feels strange to make content about your peers. I don't know a lot of fiction authors, but I know a lot of non-fiction authors, specifically within the witchy community, and it's one of the reasons that I have stopped doing book reviews. And the idea of doing reading vlogs kind of feels the same because I would be commenting on because I would be commenting on the writing, which obviously would be commenting on the author themselves. And when that is a peer of yours or a friend, that can just be kind of uncomfortable. So that's another reason that I have been examining the content that I want to make and what I am comfortable talking about. But I love watching reading vlogs and I read a lot in my life. Beyond that, I love traveling and spending time outside. I love to go camping and hiking. Basically all outdoor recreational activities. Kayaking, snowboarding, fishing, whatever. If you can do it outside, I am there. I dream of having a very active outdoorsy lifestyle, which is one of the reasons I want to move to the Pacific Northwest. How do you plan out your content? I used to be a lot more strategic about it and I would have an iPad full of notes or my notes app with all of these ideas. But now I just let passion strike me and whenever I feel like making a video about something, I do. That also really helps with burnout, which is something that comes up in this tag, which we're gonna talk about. But most often I just make videos when they feel relevant to me. Like maybe I get a question and that prompts me making a video. Or I see what is happening around me with my peers or just engaging with my community and see what they're talking about. And if I have anything that I feel like I can contribute, I'll speak. <laughs> Jesus, I am awkward. I also let the seasons really guide my content because my practice and my life is so intertwined with the seasons. I've made a lot of content about that and my Wheel of the Year has changed a lot within the past, the recent past. And I've been exploring what that looks like. If you've been keeping up with me, you've seen the videos. I made a specific video all about creating your own Wheel of the Year and what mine looks like. And right now I am in the process of doing Zodiac season vlogs, which I am really excited about, though I don't know where Virgo season is. Ignore it. I think I'm skipping it. <laughs> I really meant to make a Virgo season vlog. Screws fall out all the time. The world is an imperfect place. We'll try again next year. What are the tools of your trade? To announce this video, I actually posted an Instagram reel of the tools that I use to create content. The camera that I use is a Sony ZV-1. I absolutely love my camera, though it is just a small vlog camera. One day I might want to get another camera, something a little bit bigger with larger filming capacities. But for right now, I really love this and it is definitely an improvement of what I used to have. Before this camera, I used an old camera that belonged to my husband's family, which I don't even know when it was from. You can see it in my first videos. It isn't terrible by any means. It was from like the early 2000s and it got the job done but I am very grateful to have this and I would recommend it to anybody that just wants to make and I would recommend it to anybody who wants to make YouTube videos but doesn't want to invest a crazy amount of money for a camera. But I want to make sure to say that if you want to create content and the equipment is what is holding you back, start with whatever you have. It honestly does not matter. I know so many YouTubers that I love that film with their phone. Hannah Lee Dugan is a really great example. She also makes content that I adore and is kind of the direction that I would like to go once I get to Oregon. And if you are familiar with her content, you will know. I will also put a list of my equipment down below as well as all of the content creators that I will mention and have mentioned in this video. As a content creator, do you experience burnout? If so, how do you recover? Yes. I think as humans, we experience burnout with just about everything that we do in life ever. 
So I would be really surprised if someone said no to this. It is only normal and natural to need breaks and if you need one, take one. That is my best advice and something that I heed even when it is difficult because I get like impending doom feeling if I'm not being productive enough and I know a lot of people can relate to that. But I have learned that if I am burnt out, I cannot create from a place of depth. And if I'm doing too much, I need to rein it in, especially when I'm doing special projects that I want to put a lot of work into. And I'm trying to be more forgiving with myself if I miss a couple weeks of videos or if I don't get an Instagram post up, whatever it is. And that has been such a blessing for me. Another thing that I've noticed which has helped is all content creators talk about this, right? And they're like, I need to get all these things done. And then they take a break and they like announce that they're going away or blah, blah, blah. Or they come back with like, you haven't seen me in a couple weeks, like I needed a break. And as a viewer, I never notice. And I don't know if this sounds bad, like I'm not paying attention to them because I obviously care about someone. And if they're absent from my page for a long time, I'm curious about them and I wanna check on them. But I think we have such high standards for ourselves as creators to constantly put something up that we build it up to be something bigger than it is. People are forgiving. I certainly don't hold content creators to my standards of like, give me your YouTube video. <laughs> and I hope that people don't do that to me. At least I don't get comments about it. When I'm gone, people do check on me, but it's always coming from a good place of just like, I wanna make sure you're okay type thing. It's, it's not like, where is the content, you know? And maybe that's because my content is free, like it's just on YouTube. I don't have like a Patreon or anything, and that would be different, like if I was, you know, promising people a service or blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, that's how I deal with it. If I'm not doing well, nothing I create is gonna be good. Which videos are you most proud of and why? I have created a couple of videos that Seeing I get a notification for them just makes me smile because I put so much work into them and I know what is in there has helped people and hopefully it will continue to do that. And I consistently respond back on. Like if you leave me a comment on one of these videos, for the most part I try to get back to you because I know the, the person in that situation probably needs it because of what these videos are. The first one is my spiritual journey from growing up in the church to becoming a pagan witch. I am so deeply proud of that video. It is probably the most vulnerable thing I have ever filmed and I would love to make more videos about deconstruction. It is just the most difficult thing for me to talk about. Another reason that it is hard for me to talk about that subject is videos like that attract a lot of hateful Christians and I have nothing against Christians. My page is a safe space for everyone. Unless you make it not a safe space for others, then I'll curse you. But even the comment section on that video sometimes gets difficult to deal with because I want it to be a safe space for those who need it. But I do still have it open and the title um, to some people looks like I'm sinning, save me from damnation. So it's like an open invitation for them to be like, turn back before it is too late. So that's uncomfortable. <laughs> Another video that I'm really proud of is connecting to the land that you live on. It is all about location-based witchcraft. It is about creating a regional-based practice and working with your local land spirits. And I love that video. It really is like strap in welcome to witch school like there is 
kind of homework assigned and the video is laid out in a way to really advance your practice and it's kind of like an exercise for you watching the video because I'm going to ask you to do things in order to and acquire information in in order to cement your practice in the land that you live in. So I love that video and if you have any interest in connecting to the earth I recommend that one which I would say is probably most people watching this. I'm gonna answer these next two questions together, which are who inspires you in the magical pagan community? And are there any channels that you would recommend because they align with one another? A lot of the names that I'm gonna list you are probably very familiar with. I love Olivia, the Witch of Wonderlust, Annie, the Green Witch, my two best friends, Ella Harrison and Leah the red-headed witch. I almost said Leah Middleton. That's her name. She just released a book and that's the name that's on it. So I said Leah Middleton, but she does not go by that. But that's her name. Um, Leah, the red-headed witch, and Ella. Those are my my greatest friends and I met them both online and we have such a special relationship because we are all witchy content creators and having that camaraderie with people is like nothing I've ever experienced and they're just so supportive and make amazing content. And they both have books. Leah's just came out. Leah Middleton's. <laughs> Beyond that, I adore Hearth Witch, Ivy the Occultist, Luna Saranova, Thorn Mooney, Mint Fairy, Molly Roberts, especially for her grimoire content. Chaotic Witch Aunt. I know there's more, but those are the folks that I consistently watch. And apologies if I am missing someone who is a friend of mine. I probably am. That's why making content about your peers is tough, because you forget them and then you say it publicly for all of the internet, cemented forever. For the most part, the witchy community on YouTube is awesome. I have not had a bad experience with anyone and everybody has different perspectives and experiences and can share something valuable. Though of course, whatever anyone says, even me, take it with a grain of salt and do your own research. But I am really grateful for the community that I am a part of on this platform. Do you believe that there are any misconceptions about being a witchy pagan YouTuber? Probably that we know everything. And I think this happens for a couple of reasons. Creators, feel like they need to know everything because if they don't they should not post on the internet. I definitely have felt myself feeling like this and it's just imposter syndrome. Everyone gets it. Another thing that is normal and natural but it kind of creates this vicious cycle where people will get questions or they feel like they need to contribute something about a certain topic that they're just not well versed in. And that's okay because there are so many different avenues of magic. And I have things that I know a lot about and I feel comfortable speaking about, but there's also things that I don't know anything about. Or there's things that I just don't do in my practice, like deities. I'm a pantheist. I see deities as personifications of nature rather than conscious beings. So I'm gonna feel differently about questions if you're asking them through the lens of deities being conscious beings. And that is just how I feel about them now. That's the TLDR, but there's a little bit more to my beliefs and maybe I'll make a whole video about that. But I am just not the person to ask about that or some things. And we all have those things, things that would be better suited answered by another individual. And it's okay to say that. I know it might be difficult and I too have felt that because I'm like, well, if I can't answer this, then what business do I have posting online? But I'm not even posting about that thing. I'm talking about something else. And you know, this is just like an adjacent topic and if I don't have something to add or if I don't know, then the best thing that I can do for a viewer is to point you in the direction of someone that does or just say I don't know. On the flip side, it's important that the audience can accept that. And I think for the most part, people do, but I have seen some viewers leave nasty comments when people don't know or they feel like they don't give the correct answer. It's just important to remember that when you are watching a YouTube video, you are just watching a person with a camera. 
What do you like and dislike about being on YouTube? I have begun to love cinematography and storytelling and I want to get more into that. Before I filmed my first YouTube video, I had never even touched a camera and it has become such an interest of mine. Not only do I make YouTube videos for the public, I also make a lot of home videos for my family and I love encapsulating moments forever through film and I think that's super cool. What is your opinion on monetization, paywalls, and exclusive content? I subscribe to quite a few Patreons and I've taken courses and paid people for their labor. And I think that's really important. Everybody needs to pay their bills. I myself own an astrology business and I offer paid services. Beyond that, all of the content I create is free and I don't have a Patreon or any exclusive content at this time. But this is something I'm thinking about as I examine the kind of content I want to create. A driving force of this is wanting to create a space where I'm comfortable to share things. Because publicly, there are only so many things I'm comfortable sharing to anyone who may stumble across the video. Having a paywall would create a barrier to who is in that space and allow me to be more vulnerable. Do you have any boundaries on this platform? Yes. For me, they relate to how available I make myself to you. In an ideal world, you all could just come over and we could have tea and we could talk about witchcraft. However, my apartment is very small and that is not safe. <laughs> like I said, I love being your magical internet friend and that is how I feel about all of you and how I hope you feel about me. But it's important that I keep myself safe and I don't give too much of my personal information or create really complicated parasocial relationships and, and just maintain a relationship with you that I am comfortable with. And this is the exact reason that I think about having a Patreon to create this space of closer individuals, but still not push my own boundaries. To maintain a level of professionalism as a creator, as an author, but still be able to get to know you really well and offer vulnerable parts of myself that I'm okay sharing, but probably wouldn't be okay sharing publicly. Right now, I'm deciding where this line is and what it entails. Last month, for example, I held a grimoire crafting session in my public discord. That experience was amazing, but it did have me examining what I feel comfortable with and if I am comfortable just meeting in our discord, which is public, or if I would feel more comfortable meeting in a private community. This also really ties into parasocial relationships, something about being online that I wasn't totally prepared for. As creators, we want to create safe spaces for folks and have meaningful relationships with those who watch our content. But that is the foundation of the relationship. It is you, the viewer, watching us, which really doesn't give us an opportunity to get to know you the same way. From both sides, it's confusing, especially in the spiritual community because we have such personal conversations. This is another reason I see myself potentially creating a Patreon to hold the boundary of being a creator and maintain a professional environment while still fostering a safe space to build relationships through a lens that I am comfortable doing so. Do you have any current goals for your channel? Yes. My goals don't really revolve around numbers or anything. They're mainly content that I just wanna create. I feel so held back in this space and living here in Miami. Like right now, it is October and in so many areas, it is gorgeous outside. I just got back from Minnesota and seeing the fall leaves and being able to capture nature during this time was incredible and I have footage. You will probably see that, but I didn't film as much as I wanted to, so I don't know if it'll be like a full vlog or how I'll include it. 
but I got some really good stuff and I want to do something with it, but I'm not quite sure what yet. But while I was there, it was so nice to be outside and record and it felt like foreshadowing to the life that is to come when I move to the Pacific Northwest and having that kind of nature at my disposal to share with you. But that is mainly my goal for content creation, to, to capture beautiful places and stories and share them with you. What are some of the mistakes you made as a creator and how did you fix them? Some of my old videos don't reflect who I am now and that is okay. Growth is never embarrassing. Most of them I haven't deleted. Honestly, I think I've only deleted like two videos mainly because I felt like the information in them was harmful and at that point I will take them down. But if things have just changed, then I don't feel like there is anything harmful of leaving them up. For example, one of the first series that I did was all about the Wheel of the Year, which as you know, has changed. Those videos are still up, but since then I've taken you on a journey of how it has changed for me and explained why the things in those videos are no longer true for me. A great video that touches on this is called An Honest Conversation About Wicca and I go into how my practice changed and my thoughts of the wheel of the year and blah blah blah. I personally wouldn't constitute those videos as mistakes except for the ones that I did deem to be harmful and removed because I don't want to put it into your head that growth is bad in any context. Life is always in transit. Your practice will always be in transit. And that's okay. In what ways has your channel grown since you started? I would definitely say the quality has improved a lot, which I'm so proud of, but again, you don't need high quality things to begin your journey. The main difference that I've seen within my content and that I am most proud of is I am a lot more comfortable talking in front of a camera, which took a very, very long time. I'm going on year three. No, I'm going on year four. And I'd say it has taken me three years to be able to talk to a camera. I can talk to a phone a lot easier than a camera. I don't know why, but this is much more intimidating. If you watch my old videos, you will see it is very much sentence by sentence of like, hello, I am reading a script. Witchcraft. And now I feel like I can have much more organic conversations and I'm really grateful for that. So if you are struggling trying to talk to a camera, it will just take about three years. Keep going. Have you ever wanted to quit making YouTube videos? I have not. I have, however, wanted to stop making TikToks and I have really moved away from short form content in favor of YouTube, but this is the direction I really want to go and I feel like I am just getting started. What did you wish you knew at the beginning of your YouTube journey? The only person getting in your way is you. I wanted to share my practice for years before I did, and it has been such a rewarding experience. And for a long time, I fell in this cycle of wanting to create but not doing it because I felt like I wasn't ready or it wouldn't be good enough. You just have to start. I am definitely very guilty into paralyzing myself into inaction for fear of not being perfect. And the only person who has missed out is me. Whatever it is, I hope that you can put yourself out there, whether it's YouTube or in your physical community or whatever you want to do. Don't wait for the perfect moment to arise. Just start. We build things up so much in our heads but once you do them, they're just another thing that you have done. Do you post on any other platforms? Yes, I'm pretty much all over the internet, but like I said, I have pulled away from making short form content. I stream three days a week on Twitch. I have a YouTube, I have an Instagram. This is YouTube. I have a TikTok, I have a Discord. You should definitely join that. Where else am I? You know what I'd like to talk about? Goodreads and Amazon. This is not social media, but you can review my book on those platforms and I never tell people to do it, but reviews are really important for authors. Instead of following me on TikTok, just five stars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave you because this video has gotten very long. Oh, tagging. I'm supposed to tag people. 
honestly, I'm like the last person in this community to do this video. Everyone that I mentioned in this video, I believe has already done it. So I would like to tag anyone who is new to content creation. And if you want to create a video and you're looking for what to do, wait, don't do this one. It's about content creation. <laughs> I've been talking so long, I'm delirious. Okay, never mind. This would not be a good YouTube video to start with. I would like to tag anyone who has not done this video, especially if you are a smaller creator. And if you do it, please reach out to me so I can watch. That is all I have for you today. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notification to keep up with me between uploads. There is a link down below to all of my other platforms, as well as to join my Discord, buy my book, or book an astrology reading with me. And until next time, I hope you have a magical rest of your day. Blessed be and goodbye, everyone.